Well, Ohio. No, no. no. It's the gentlewoman from California. Ms. Jackie Spear is recognized for five minutes. Madam Chair, thank you so much for holding this hearing. Let me say at the outset um, to my good friend, Mr. Jordan, um, to others on the Republican side, yes, we deplore violence against crisis pregnancy centers. We deplore violence against justices and judges. We deplore violence against the institution we call the U.S. Capitol. We also deplore violence against abortion clinics. And you have said nothing about the fact that 11 people have been murdered at those clinics. Four doctors, two clinic employees, one security guard, one police officer, and one clinic escort. Last year, there were 186 arson targeted at abortion centers. There were 123 acts of vandalism, 123 incidents of assault and battery. Stalking increased by 600% last year um, over 2020. Invasions of abortion facilities increased by 129%. Assault and batteries increased by 128%. And suspicious packages by 163%. I did not hear one word from any of you deploring and denouncing those acts of violence. So you have very selective memories. Let me start, Madam Chair, by speaking about mothers. I'm a mother. I'm a mother who had an abortion. 59% of women in this country who have abortions are mothers. They love their children. They want to provide for their children. Across this country, women are asking themselves, is it even safe to get pregnant? This is not hyperbolic. As states criminalize abortion, they're also making it illegal to treat many pregnancy-related complications. I've had two miscarriages. Miscarriages happen a lot. One in five pregnancies. It is often indistinguishable from an induced abortion. It is the same procedure, a D and C or a D and E. And the treatment for miscarriage is the same as the treatment to induce medical abortion. If a miscarriage doesn't progress naturally, which could take up to three or four weeks, a woman may need medication abortion or a DNC, especially if there's signs of infection. When I had my first miscarriage, I was told I was going to have to wait a period of days before they could give me a DNC. I can't begin to tell you what it's like having wanted that fetus to become a baby and know that it was dead in my body and I had to walk around with that. I had a mother at a church once say to me, I had to carry a dead fetus to term for nine months. We are now living in a country where women will be denied miscarriage treatment because doctors will rightly worry about whether or not they're going to be thrown in jail for 99 years. The same goes for providers treating women who are seriously ill. If a woman has a 50% chance of dying, is that sufficient to provide an abortion? How about 20% or 10%? At what point do we value the life of the woman? Ms. Gosgraves, how will criminalizing abortion impact patients who are experiencing miscarriage or other pregnancy-related complications? You know, we are already hearing reports on the ground from providers being uncertain about the care that they can actually provide when faced with someone who has uh, an ectopic pregnancy. And I, to go back to the point that you raised around miscarriage, what is likely to happen is an acceleration in miscarriages being investigated. And that might not be everyone's experience, but I am telling you it will be the experience of people who are more likely to be low income and black and brown people. You know, this is, this is a population that already has too much unfair contact with the criminal justice system. And so what we will see is going through a miscarriage loss turning into a criminal event. Nothing about that helps the life or health of the person who is pregnant, and all of it shows the actual safe and effective care people need. Thank you. Um, and it, we're not talking just about miscarriages. Senator McMorrow, you've spoken about needing a DNC after your IUD punctured your uterus. Can you tell us about your experience and what it would have meant for you if abortion had been illegal? 
Yes. Uh, after having my daughter, I had an IUD placed and that IUD ruptured through my uterus. It's a very rare instance that required me scheduled for a laparoscopy and a DNC to have it removed. The impact is that I could have died if I had not been able to have the procedure to have that removed. And we're already hearing from the University of Michigan Medicine um, saying that they the, fear the training. The gentlelady's time has expired. Very moving, though. 